Hello everyone, I'm Chris Martinson, CEO of Peak Prosperity, and I'm here with a really important message for you about the coronavirus, the Wuhan virus that's come through, the new coronavirus that has been sweeping the world. We've been on top of this right from the get-go. Unfortunately, if you've been reading the news, you have been either underinformed or in many cases misinformed about what this virus really is. It's a very serious thing. Now, before I go on, just so you know, I have my PhD from Duke University. It's from the Department of Pathology. My specialty was toxicology. So I've studied all of these things. No, I'm not a practicing doctor right now, but yes, I do understand how these things work. And unfortunately, again, the World Health Organization, the CDC, they're very cautious sort of bureaucratic organizations. This is a fast moving situation. So I'm here to cut through the noise and give you the information you really need. To get more updates, please come by Peak Prosperity and you can get a lot of information there. We're updating the site constantly hourly about this particular development right now. As well, we have a place for subscribers who want to go in a little deeper and get some good advice on what they can do about this. Now, let's rewind. This is a really fast breaking development. We only first found out about this particular strain of this coronavirus. And let me break that word down for you. Corona it means crown. And the reason they call it that is if you looked at a, one of these virus particles under an electron microscope, it kind of looks, it's all spiky, so it looks like it's wearing a crown. That's the corona virus. And this one's particularly dangerous because it's only been a month since it's been on our radar screen. It was about mid-December when China first uh, noticed this coronavirus, very quiet about it. It wasn't until the 31st of December before an official notification went out to the World Health Organization. And gosh, already, we're seeing 40 million people now quarantined in their cities in China. It's a really serious thing. Now, why? The first thing you need to understand is this is kind of reads like a, a spy thriller, you know, novel that you might read about a pandemic. Why? Because the things that really confer uh, that dangerousness to a new virus is, one, the human species has not seen it before. So it, our, we haven't had a chance to deal with it. So we don't have this thing called herd immunity. None of us have antibodies to this coronavirus. So when it comes out into a population with no natural immunity, it tends to sweep through very vigorously. The second thing is this is a cross species jump. They've already done the DNA sequencing on it and discovered this is a bat virus that went through a snake, picks up some snake virus bits, and now it's crossed into humans. That makes it especially dangerous for a pandemic. Then you need two other factors in there. One is called the transmissivity. It's a R naught or an R zero. It's asking the question, how easy does this jump between people? So if I had it and I walked into a room of 10 people, how many people on average would get that? If you have a R naught greater than one, meaning I have a chance on average of walking into a room full of 10 and one other person catches it, that's enough to sustain transmission. An R naught of less than one, this thing will die out on its own over time. But anything over one is a concern it's thought that this has an R naught of somewhere between 1.5 and 2.4. So this really has a chance to spread and spread uh, pretty strongly. The second big thing we need to know is that this is pretty lethal. The people who've described what is happening, a healthy 23 year old read this full account about what his experience was, just got laid low. Like imagine the worst flu you've had times two, really touch and go with strong medical support. This person pulled through but we're finding that people who are a little bit older and the very young, of course, as usual, are prone to really having catastrophic outcome. This thing has a case fatality rate of around 3%, but we won't know how high it is until all is said and done. I think it looks like early data, it's coming in a little higher than 3%. If it came in at 3% and it came to America and it was as uh, transmissive as the Spanish flu was in 1919, that would translate into about 16 million people becoming critically ill and another two to three million people succumbing to this. It's a very dangerous virus, which is why we get to the thing that really annoys me about this is that it has a really long latency period, meaning if, if you infected me, I would go about five days before I would begin to express any symptoms. It would be another maybe four days before those symptoms were bad enough for me to go, geez, maybe I should go see a doctor. So there's somewhere between a nine and a 14 day window before somebody who, who got, gets this virus would actually present to the medical establishment. During this whole time, they are infective and uh, infecting other people around them. So here's why I get annoyed by this. The doctors know this, the World Health Organization knows this, certainly all the people at the CDC know this, all of the health specialists in the UK know this, in Europe, in Finland, anywhere you want, Asia, Singapore, Japan, they all know this. 
Now, what would you do if you knew that there were tens of thousands of people infected with this thing who were living in a place and you were going to have them maybe traveling, getting on little metal tubes, getting in airplanes and traveling to your country? Well, knowing that this has an incubation period where you can't detect any symptoms, I think the responsible thing would be to say no travel. But that's too hard because that would cost a lot of money. So we're not going to do that. But then maybe there would at least be a quarantine period. All you've been reading about is that the security precautions are what they're doing is taking the temperatures of people as they deplane from ground zero, where this virus is known to be uh, endemic and epidemic right now. They're taking the temperature readings by pointing a little something at people's foreheads. And if you don't have a fever, come on in. Completely ineffective. And they know that, but that's not what's being said. Uh, they are telling you that you are being protected by screening measures at the airport. So you need to understand that. And the other thing is that they've talked about the World Health Organization on the 23rd of January, that's yesterday at the time of this filming, declined to declare this a public health emergency. They said it doesn't quite fit our, doesn't fit all the criteria yet, but oh my gosh, they must've got lawyers on there instead of doctors. Because what they said was to, to classify this as a public health emergency, they need to have somebody outside of China who's got the disease spreading it. And all they had for sure was people with the disease who'd come from China and they didn't have any technical examples of, of cross uh, contamination once they were outside. So they said, technically, it's not a pandemic. So I have to read to you where we are on the WHO, WHO World Health Organization pandemic checklist. Dan, bring this up, because look at this, phase one, if you're in phase one, no animal influenza virus circulating among animals has been reported to cause infection in humans. Er, cross that one out. Phase two, an animal influenza virus circulating in domesticated or wild animals is known to have caused infection in humans and is therefore considered a specific potential pandemic threat. Oops, cross that one out. We're way past that one. How about phase three? Have we made it to phase three? That's where an animal or human animal influenza reassortant virus and that's what we have here, remember? Bat, snake, human. Has caused sporadic cases or small clusters of disease in people, but has not resulted in human-to-human -human transmission sufficient to sustain community-level outbreaks. Cross er, that one off, because we're way past phase three. We're here at phase four on this pandemic checklist where human-to-human -human transmission of an animal or human-animal influenza reassortant virus able to sustain community-level outbreaks has been verified. That's where we are. We have uh, verification now of human to human uh, jumping, not just on what's called first generation. That's where I got it from the snake. I gave it to you. That's one gen generation jump. But then you gave it to somebody else. That's a second generation. They give it to somebody else. That's a third generation. We now have uh, hard evidence of fourth generation jumps. That means we have met all the criteria for this to be a full blown pandemic. And to get to phase five, this is where extreme measures get put in place, including things like bans on travel, complete shutdowns of, of uh, locations to traveling in and out, something like the China quarantines, but sometimes at the nation state level. Phase five would be the same identified virus has caused sustained community level outbreaks in two or more countries in a WHO region. That may have already happened by the time you started to watch this. Because, as I told you, we had tens of thousands of people leave the affected areas in China and walk through airports completely unscanned for 20 days. And only recently they started scanning them. But as we mentioned, that's ineffective when you have an incubation period of five days like we've got. And, and during that incubation period, as a reminder, no fever, no aches, no chills, no anything that feels fluish. You feel fine, but you're carrying that particular virus particle. So... This is something old people, immunocompromised, young people, you need to be aware of this. Please study this. Understand what your uh, measures can be that you can take around this. Come by Peak Prosperity. We've got a great report there for people who want to go deeper and understand what you can do to protect yourself. Some of it's pretty simple. Wash your hands. Get uh, not just a surgical mask, but N95 mask. Things like that. But you really need to start taking this seriously. And we're going to be on top of this. So again, I'm Chris Martinson. Thank you for listening. And please come by Peak Prosperity and check out the material we've got for you. It's really important.